so the system is on, it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and put on a sample and uh, I'll walk you through how to uh, find that sample. Okay, so one of the first things you need to do is check whether the sample holder, which is this thing, is properly in position. So whenever you're trying to check that, it's a good idea to switch to the 10x objective because the 10x objective is short, um, so it's, it, it sits farther away from this part of the, the sample holder. Uh, and it is also not as expensive. So if there are some, if, if, if you accidentally bump something, the damage will be much less than if you bump one of our more expensive objectives. Now, you don't want to bump anything, but this is just a safety measure in case something happens, uh, it'll be restricted to our sort of um, not, not as valuable objective. So we're going to switch the 10x here. And we're going to go, it says change immersion. So um, this is because the objective that we had with, uh, on the system was an oil objective, and every time you change between an oil and an on and a non-oil objective, the system prompts you to either clean the oil or add oil. It's just a reminder that the system has to make sure you're doing things properly. So the, the objective did not have enough any oil, so uh, I'm gonna say done. And then I'm gonna press load position. What load position does is it drops the objective as far as it can, so it moves the objective down uh, which is exactly what I want. I don't want it close to this, okay? Um, so what things do we need to ke uh, keep in mind before we put on our sample? So the first thing is we want to make sure that if our sample uh, is a dish or some sort of slide, that we have this sample holder in place as opposed to this sample holder, which is for plates. Uh, plates are quite complicated to use on a confocal for various reasons uh, that I'm not going to go into now. If you need to use plates, um, please contact the MSL staff. Uh, there's a number of things you have to keep in mind when using plates on a confocal. In any case, the right sample holder is in place. The other thing we need to check is that it's not wobbly or tilted. So we wanna make sure that if we move our finger around, everything seems nice and stable. What we don't want is a situation like this where it's loose, where you can feel wobbling, nor do we want a case where this is inserted but it is at an angle, so if you press it, it goes down, okay? So we want it nice and flat so that our sample is not tilted. Uh, if you need to remove it and uh, put it back in, you can pop it out just by pulling up, and then you align the red dot that you see in the bottom left-hand corner of the sample holder with the red dot that you see in the bottom left-hand co uh, left corner of the space in which you're going to put the sample holder. Then you simply lay it here, and again, it's very important to make sure that you have a low mag objective that's in the load position. So you can see here, nose piece in load position. And then you just gently push from right to left and make sure it's securely in place. All right, so now we are ready to put on the sample. You don't have to remove this. Uh, I just show you how to remove it in the case that it were loose, that's how you put it back in. But if it looks good and it was, it was sort of stable, um, at the bottom, you, were, you, you would have been ready to go. So I'll grab the sample and we'll put it on. So the sample we're going to use is uh, a standard in vitrogen slide that has some, some cells on it. These cells are labeled with alexafluor 488 phalloidin, so that labels the actin, mitotracker red, uh, that labels the mitochondria with a red fluorophore, and DAPI. So this is an inverted microscope. The objectives are on the bottom pointing up. And so we always need to put the cover slip on the sample towards the objective, which in this means the in this case means the cover slip goes down. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to try and do this one-handed, and that worked. Okay. Uh, there we go. So you can see by moving the joystick, I've sort of centered it. Um, I've centered my objective right underneath my sample. I can move the stage with the joystick, and by pressing this button, I can toggle between fast mode, which is what it was on right now, uh, and then now I'm deflecting the joystick fully, but you can see that the movement is much less than if I return to fast mode. And again, you toggle between the modes by pressing that button. So one of the things to keep in mind is, um, depending on what you want to do, uh, whether you're doing cellular work or subcellular work, uh, you may need a higher resolution objective. If you needed a higher resolution objective, to look at subcellular details, we should have put the sample 
on only after having the proper objective in place and oiling that objective because our highest resolution objectives are oil objectives. Uh, what I'm going to do for, for this sort of video is start um, with lower resolution objectives just because it's going to be a little bit easier for the video and then I'll, I'll show some examples of work that you could do um, at higher resolution what the considerations would be there. All right, so the sample is on. So now let's talk about how uh, we can find uh, the sample visually before we actually start taking images with the confocals. Samples on the microscope. Let's lower this. And you can see in the software, there are four tabs, locate, acquisition, processing, and maintain. Uh, so whenever we need to look at things by eye, we're going to use locate. Whenever we need to look at things with the confocal, we're going to use acquisition. So I'm going to go back to locate because I first want to find my sample by eye. Um, so here there are some quick access buttons, bright field, DIC, blue, green, and red. And if you press these, everything on the microscope will set itself up so, such that you can see the fluorescent that results from a blue fluorophore, a green fluorophore, a red fluorophore, or these two forms of bright field illumination. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that be able to see anything. I need to turn off the light. And so you'll see that if I, for example, press the green um, button here, the sample will be illuminated with blue light. And if I look down the eyepieces, I'll see the green fluorescence. So I'm going to actually use the red fluorophore to find my focus. And once I have that in place, uh, I'll show you a few other tricks that are useful um, to, 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 to do that finding. All right, so once the sample is in focus, you can change objectives in two ways. One is by clicking here and selecting the objective you want. So we were at the 10X and while the video was off, I switched to 20X. Another option is by pressing the proper key um, on the touchpad, okay? So what are the things you can do? So you don't actually want to leave the light on as I'm doing right now in the video because that might bleach your sample. So to turn the light off, you go to this reflected light off button and you press it and you can see now the light is off. You might not actually see anything in the video, but just trust me, the light is off. Okay, so what other things can you do? So when you're looking around, um, you can look by eye, so you can use the eyepieces and then you can click on the proper fluorophore that you want to look at by clicking on these buttons. Uh, then you keep looking and then you, you, you can look back on the screen and um, click on these buttons to change the fluorophore and turn the reflected light off once you're done. Now that's cumbersome because you are on the microscope looking through here and then every time you need to do some, something, you need to step, uh, move away from the microscope, grab the mouse, or sort of find it in the dark, find the cursor on the screen, move it, and then click the right thing. So th there's, a, there's a simpler way of doing these things by touching uh, buttons on the microscope, which I'll show you now. So to do that, I'm gonna turn on the light. And so that easier way of doing things is as follows. This button here, the one that says RL, will allow you to press this button. So those two buttons are the same. So if I press this, that toggles the light on and off. So again, if I press that button, light turns on, if I press it again, it turns off. So that's a very quick way of turning the light on and off, which is nice. The other two buttons, which are very useful, are if you look at this, this knob has five buttons going around. There's two here, one there, two down here. And so these two buttons down here, which are sort of very similar to these, I don't think you can see them, unfortunately. Uh, you might be able to see them there, just barely. Um, so those two buttons, uh, allow you to rotate the filter cube. So in here, underneath the objective, there are different filter cubes that allow you to see by eye different combinations of fluorophores. So you can see, for example, BAPI, green, uh, fluorophores, red fluorophores, and you can switch between them by clicking here on the screen on blue, green, and red, or by clicking these buttons down here you rotate the wheel that contains those filters in one direction or the other. So when you're looking by eye, by pressing those buttons, you can toggle between the settings and it's just a fast way uh, of moving between the different uh, fluorophore options. So that's just a trick to make your life a little bit easier. 
Okay, so now that we have the sample on and we're in focus as confirmed visually, I can't show you that with the video, but just trust me that that's, that's true. Um, we're gonna switch and I'll show you how to optimize settings for sort of cellular level work. We're using a 20X objective, which is the optimal when we wanna do uh, cellular work. Um, so we'll talk about how to optimize that and then, and then we'll discuss how to optimize things for subcellular work, which will require an oil objective.